Hello again, everybody. This is Dan Clouser, and welcome back to the Journey of My Mother's Son podcast. I am here on location at the Ripken Experience in Aberdeen, Maryland for the Baseball for All Girls National Baseball Tournament, and I'm joined with two legends, Maybelle Blair and Shirley Berkovich. Guys, thanks for joining me today. Oh, we're happy to be here, believe me. Awesome. So, we first met each other five years ago in 2016 when I was still running the Big Vision Foundation and we did a uh, memorial tournament for Ruth Hartman, who played in the uh, AAGPBL, um, like you guys did. And um, we did it with the IWBC, uh, which you guys are still part of today. Um, So, tell me a little bit first um, about your playing days. I'll start with you first, Maybell. Um, to have the opportunity to play in the league. I know I'll let you tell the story, but I know initially you didn't want to go. So tell me a little bit about that process. Well, I actually did want to go, but the problem was my mother didn't want me to go. And uh, so when the scout came home and uh, uh, wanted me to sign up and to go, she says, um, no, my daughter's not leaving this house. And he went on and on and on, and, and he finally she, he says, Mrs. Blair, you don't quite understand. We're going to pay her $55 a week. So my, she looks, my mother looked over to my father and says, George, go crank up the car. I'm packing up her suitcase, and I was on the next train out to Chicago. And that's the way I got in. That's awesome. But $55 a week, she thought I was going to send money home, but I lost it playing poker on the bus. <laughs> so, Shirley, your story of uh, <clears throat> getting scouted and, and going to play, what, what was it like for you? Well, I actually wasn't scouted. There was an article in the newspaper saying that uh, they were holding tryouts for the All-American Girls. And um, I actually didn't see it. My brother did. And he said to me, why don't you get down and try out? Well, I was only 16 years old and scared to death. I said, no, no way am I going down there. And he says, well, he says, come on. He says, I'll go with you. He said, we'll just sit in the stands. He said, you don't have to go down. Just, just watch. Well, I think he knew that there was no way I was going to sit in the stands and watch. And sure enough, I got down there and tried out. And about two, two weeks later, I got a telegram saying to report to the uh, spring training in Indiana. Well, my dad and my brother and I, we're all excited. Oh, we're going to play baseball. And then my mom jumps in and she says, hey, wait a minute. She says, I never heard of any girls baseball team. She says, taking all these young girls down there to Indiana. She said, no, she said, I'm going with her. So she, uh, she bought a train ticket with me and and we went on the train to Indiana. She met the chaperone and the manager, and they assured her that everything was on the up and up, that it really was a league. So then she told me I could stay. Wow, that, that's awesome. So obviously, um, unless there's someone out there living under a rock, they've seen the movie A League of Their Own. Um, <clears throat> so I know a lot of times people think, you know, Hollywood added a lot of stuff, or how accurate was the movie to what you guys actually went through as players? Well, as far as I was concerned, and I'm sure Shirley agree with me, it was about 90, uh, 85% accurate. The only thing that was different was all the Hollywood stuff in there, like Gina doing the splits and the managers right. coming into the dressing room, which wasn't allowed whatsoever, right. and especially with Tom Hanks, and uh, things like that. But other than that, don't you surely think that it was about 85 to yeah. 90% accurate other than that? Yeah. And Shirley, you were actually in the movie. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, it was just a, a little fleeting part in the movie. And, and she, I remember she said to me, she says, just do your line and then get off. <laughs> so that's what I did. I did but, but you know what? That should have been my part. <laughs> I tell you, I practiced and practiced and I had it all memorized and everything. And she picked Shirley. Can you believe that? That's unbelievable. And then Shirley won't even buy me a hot dog with all of her money that she gets from gratuity. Can you? Yeah. Oh, that should have been my part. Man, that movie's been out for 30 some years. She still doesn't know the line. <laughs> oh, that's great. But we had fun. That's great. So, what was it like 
when you guys heard there was going to be a movie made? Because, I mean, really, I mean, I'm a big baseball fan, and I can't honestly say that I knew there was a women's league prior to the movie coming out. So it almost seems like it was a little bit of forgotten history. So what was it like for someone to actually say, this is a story that needs to be told? Well, uh, it really shocked us because we had no clue that... Uh, you know, we nobody even knew we had played baseball until the movie came out. And thanks to Penny Marshall, she uh, decided to make the movie, and we were so fortunate because look what has happened today in women's baseball. Finally, we're getting it back where everybody knows that girls like to play baseball as well as boys. Yeah. And now we're getting the opportunity, and it's proof today and here at Aberdeen that we have 500 little girls out here just playing their hearts out, and I've never seen so many smiles in all my life, and I love every minute of it. Yeah, awesome. For you, Shirley, what yeah. was it like when you heard about the movie? That's so well. When Penny Marshall came down to Cooperstown, when we were recognized by the Hall of Fame, and talked to all the girls, and and said she should like to make you know make a movie of this. She thought it was a piece of history. Well, you know, nobody thought anything about it because a couple years went by before she actually got the backing and everything to put the movie together. And then when it came out, oh my gosh. It was just like an explosion. I mean, the, and when the whole world knew what we did, it was it just amazing of, of what happened. Yeah. And the uh, highest grossing baseball movie Ever of all made. time, above okay. Field of Dreams, above Bull Durham, Naturally. was your story. Yeah, right. Very, very cool. So, um, Mabel, you, you started to touch on it a little bit. Like I said, we're... <laughs> We're sitting here in Aberdeen, Maryland at the Ripken Complex. You can hear the announcer in the background and some music in the background. We're watching, you know, two of 50 plus teams that are here in Aberdeen, Maryland of all girls playing baseball. Did you ever think that you would see this in your lifetime? Truthfully, no, but thank God yeah. it has happened. And I finally got to recognize that like I said before, that girls love to play baseball. But this makes my old heart of 94 years old very, very happy. And uh, we're going to have a league of our own again. And that's what our goal will be as soon as we can develop enough girls to put on a good show for people. We will have a league of our own again. That's awesome. And Shirley, again, I mean, do you ever think that you'd, I mean, even five years ago when we did our event in Reading, um, you know, it kind of, went from a baseball tournament to a baseball festival. We had Monet Davis there and everything, um, but it struggled for us to get girls out there. And now to see this, and when I mean, Justine started this, you know, several years ago with just a few teams, and you guys were, you know, here from the very beginning, in five, six years, do you think it would look like this? Well, that that's what we have Justine to thank for. I mean, had it not been for her to get this baseball for all together, this never would have happened either. So uh, we owed a debt, owe a debt of gratitude to Justine for, for making this all happen. And no, I, I, five years ago, I would have never believed that we would go from one or two teams to, like you said, 400 some girls out here playing ball today. That's, that's awesome. And did you also realize, Dan, that uh, we have uh, a, a professional uh, women's umpire out here, Emma? Sure. And she yep. started down in, P in Reading, remember? Yep. Yes, yes, Wasn't she did. Wasn't that wonderful? We were all out there together, and we're so proud of uh, Emma, and we're hoping that she will turn out to be the first woman umpire yeah. in Major League Baseball. And that's it's the only one that doesn't have yep. a professional uh, woman in it. The football does, That's basketball right. does, right. and baseball is the easiest one of the three to referee. Yeah, it really is. It really, it really is. is. Yeah, and that, that goes all the way back, you know, I mean, Perry Barber, who you guys well know, is one of the oh, leading Perry's trailblazers wonderful. there. She was there with us in Reading. Right. She's here again this weekend. So, you know, she's, again, one of those women who's out there, you know, creating ways for <laughs> Emma to get out here and, and open those doors. I mean... At, I know it's always tough in the moment to recognize, you know, being a trailblazer. So at what point in your lives did you realize what we did in that league 
was incredibly trailblazing, not just for women in sports, but women in general. I'll, I'll start with you first, Shirley, because I've been going to Maybell first a lot of times, so I'll let okay. you go first this time. Yeah, uh, well, it, it, it was hard to, uh, it was hard to, uh, to realize that this was going to be, become what it, what it has been. So, uh, I don't know, I, I just feel like it, I don't know. I just, I'm just overwhelmed by it all. <laughs> I, I just can't can't believe what I'm seeing today. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. Maybell, I mean, when did it kind of hit you that wow, we did something pretty special all those years ago? Well, I think it started uh, when we uh, was down for baseball for all. I'm the very first one down in Florida, and uh, all the little girls were in uniform and playing baseball, and I haven't been seeing that, you know, because there wasn't any. Right. So it started, they said, what's going on here? This is, and the families and the men and the husbands and the, and the fathers of these little girls were all for girls playing baseball. And this is what started it for me. I said, something's happening and it's going to happen and we will have a league of our own again. Yeah, that's awesome. And I sit here and I watch you guys interact with the girls that come up and want to get pictures taken and autographs and all that sort of stuff. and. I mean, you guys are so accommodating to every young girl that comes up here and, and wants to talk with you and spend time and you're genuine in your interest of hearing their stories. Um, why do you think that's so important to, to really give these young girls your full attention when you're interacting with them? Oh, we uh, we want them to hear our stories. We want them to know what it was like when we played ball. And we want them to, to know that there is opportunity for them now that they didn't have five years ago. Yeah. And, and, and that's what our message is to them, that, uh, that they've got the opportunity now. Now it's up to them yeah. to move forward. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, you know, the movie sort of made role models for us, for the little girls. And so we got to prove that we are role models because they want to look up to somebody. So anything we can do to promote that and teach them that this is what it's all about. They have a chance. Yeah, yeah. So, um, want to talk a little bit about another one of your uh, pet projects that you guys have going on with the IWBC um, out in Rockford, and uh, it's about building a, a museum out there for women's baseball. Um, I'll let you go first again on this one, Maybell, but tell me a little bit about that project and, and what your vision is for it. Well, my vision is that we have our Museum Goid, where we will have our own Hall of Fame and our own history for not only the uh, American girls, but the international girls, where they can also bring in their memorabilia and have their uh, Hall of Fame. And uh, we want to promote this to make it the cradle for women's baseball, just like in Williamsport for the boys, where they can say, we have a home also. And where else could it be but in Rockford, because when you mentioned League of Their Own, what do you think of? Rockford Peaches, Peaches. right? So it, the whole world thinks of Rockford Peaches. So the, the most dominant place where it should be, I think, is in Rockford. And uh, we're working very hard, IWBC, to do this. And we're now um, raising our money to get an uh, activity building going first. We thought that if we get the activity building going first, it'll be easier to bring in more money for the uh, museum. We want batting cages, we want uh, training facilities, we want to have an umpire school there where these girls can come in and, hey, this is our home. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so before I ask your opinion on that, so I just want to relay to my listeners that we're actually sitting with an original Rockford Peach here in Shirley. Um, Maybell played for Peoria. And I hate right. the peaches. <laughs> <laughs> um, so again, your feeling on that museum, why being in Rockford is so important and why it's so significant? We've named Rockford the cradle of baseball. We feel that, that that's the place where it should be, yeah. is in Rockford. And, and that, like Maybell said, that, that is our aim, to get, get a place of our own right there right there in the city where the peaches played actually the the museum and activities uh, facilities will be right across the street from Bayer Stadium where the peaches actually played they've refurbished that stadium so so it's it's 
back in in good shape, and uh, uh, so so that's that's where we want to want to have our our own place. Yeah, that's cool. So right after the uh, the movie was released, um, Coors Light sponsored the uh, Colorado Silver Bullets um, women's baseball team, which is actually how I became exposed to women's baseball because I'd coached. Um, a team in Reading that played against the Silver Bullets, um, and that was really my first exposure. What, um, when when you guys heard about having a women's team barn, you know, barnstorming playing against men, what was your general, you know, feeling with that? And I'll start with you, Shirley. Oh, I was <laughs> I was very disappointed in the way they they handled the Silver Bullets. They got I don't know how many thousands of girls out there for. Uh, uh, tryouts and they picked one team 25 girls out of all of those girls they could have very easily started a four-team league that, that was and, my feeling exactly and played them amongst themselves yeah. rather than send them out playing against men yeah. we don't need to play against men we don't need to prove anything against playing against a man right. I mean we have our own skills and things like that and we should they should be shown off against other women not against a man. Yeah, and I, I often felt that, that same way. Even when we played against them, I thought that was really cool, but on the, especially in the momentum of the movie, which is why that team was started in the first place, and like you said, thousands of women came out and tried out for those teams, so to start a, a four-team league would have been, in my mind, you know, the way to go. Do you, do you agree with that assessment, Maybell? Oh, absolutely. I, I believe that wholeheartedly, and I do not believe that girls should be playing against men because men are men. I mean, let's face it, there is, even in the NBA, in the in WBA, the best uh, women basketball player in the whole world could not sit on an NBA bench. And it's the same way with baseball. We will never make baseball if we make a double a team a couple of girls gonna be very lucky because we're not that fast we're not that good but we are really great at our own skills which we can put on a good show and this is what we would love to have and that's why it has to be a league of their own again yeah, I, I agree with that and uh, i definitely hope that comes to fruition i think uh you know the key is again getting some corporate backing behind it and you know that sort of stuff in place i think that's really important um you know so hopefully it happens because again just walking around this complex today and seeing you know all these girls teams and i mean it, it's good baseball i mean it is it is good baseball and it, it's really refreshing to to see it and you know it's it's awesome girls at this age uh can compete with the boys it's just as good but when they start developing, that it's a different ball game. Like I went to a, a tournament in uh, Covina years ago, and it was all boys team. We had one little girls team. And the little boys thought, oh, what are these girls doing out here? Well, make a long story short, the girls won the championship team, all girls. And it was wonderful. And we can compete until that time when things change. Right, right. So just about out of time, any, any last things you guys want to add about just, again, what this event means to you, um, anything at all? Yeah, it, it's, like I said before, it, it's just something that, that I just love. I just love the fact to see these, these girls out here playing baseball, having them the opportunity to make a choice. I don't want to play softball, I want to play baseball. So I... I in, in favor of them going on, moving on, doing the best they can. And if they want to play baseball, play baseball. Yeah. Hey, Bell. Oh, I think the same thing. We want a place of our home, like uh, Rockford, for our girls, just like Williamsport. I'm still preaching that, where they can call home, where our little girls don't have to go out and play with the boys, so they can have their own little leagues, and we have our own home. And I hope to heck, I, as long as I live, it'll happen. Yeah. I just, I just, one thing I just want to add is that a lot of times people think that if you're advocating for 
girls baseball that you're against girls softball. No. And for me, it's always been, no, it's about choice. If you want to play baseball, play baseball. If you want to play softball, play softball. So I really want to make that clear to our listeners. This isn't, right. this isn't a, uh, you know, a, a, against softball type of comp. Right. Two. It's just, yeah. it's about choice. If a, whatever a girl wants to do, they can do. And it's, you know, goes from yeah. sports and then into real life. Whatever career they choose, they can choose. And I think that's the thing that I really want to make okay. important for the listeners. And it's not, it's about choice. It's not about baseball versus right. softball. Yeah. I also play professional softball. So I love softball. Right. I right. mean, I love softball dearly, but I want to give the girls a chance to play baseball because they love baseball so give them a chance if they want to play softball more power to them i'm all for them but give them a home of their own right absolutely oh guys thank you so much uh for taking the time again uh when we were in reading i think you guys had a flight that left a little early so i missed doing a podcast with you then so i'm glad we could carve out the time here in the stands to to do it i love hanging out with you guys all day and We'll uh, you know, we'll bump into each other throughout the week, and maybe we'll get you to Cracker Barrel one day this week. I hope so. <laughs> There's nothing I like better than the Cracker Barrel, Dad. I have been waiting and waiting, and somebody said, "Oh, we should go to a Cracker Barrel." I says, "Is there one here?" You know, I I love nothing better than chicken and dumplings. There you That's go. my very favorite meal, and I haven't had one in about three years now. <laughs> At least there you go. All right, well, folks out there listening, be, f- be sure to check out my other blogs and podcasts at danclauser.com. Maybell, Shirley, thanks again for joining me. Thank you, Thank Dan. you, Dan, for being here and supporting women's baseball. No problem. And thank you, Don. If it weren't for, for guys like you, these kind of things wouldn't be, be happening. Thank so you. Thank you. That. All right.